<laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to episode <laughs> number eight of drifting. Yo, it feels like it doesn't really, no, that. not really. I was Unsure. thinking it feels like fewer than that. That's weird. That's I so thought weird. It felt like more yeah. than that. It, I think it just felt like it balanced out and it was the amount of time oh. that we've had. It's almost like we're comedically repeating what was said without being heard. Nah. Huh. You know, I was going to feel bad about what I'm about to do. I don't anymore. So, <laughs> oh. let's, let's go around because because we uh, we started a little bit later. Now, because it's episode eight, everyone gets eight word intros. Peachy, go. I am Peachy Pixelate. Watch me on Twitch. Please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, no me, and also media. Go! Uh, I hate computers. Three meg down isn't enough. Okay! Uh, Tess, and also Kareem. Go! Um, I hate counting. I, I'm S. Um, <laughs> I have no idea. Bitch, that's more than eight! <laughs> <laughs> She's a... I failed the assignment. I'm sorry. <laughs> Safi and Astrid. Hello. Hi, I'm Safi, and I've had two many Red Bulls. That's... Oh, <laughs> what is with all this blatant fucking cheating? I hate it. Uh, Excuse me. Mine was eight. Mine you're, was eight. You're, yeah, you, it's, it's the good children right there, you see. Gold star. Hello, I'm Sheepdog. I run the Wandering Inn. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to fuck that up. I was reading ahead and I was like, shit, I'm going to finish on Wandering. I was so happy I had to flip everyone off. Uh, so, yes, we're a, a little bit late today, so we'll probably just do a very quick, um, a, a very quick, uh... No, let's start, let's go. Okay. Um, no, I had something I needed to say. Well, you've already used your eight words, so... I have you. shit! Okay, fine. <laughs> um... Yes, uh, the, main thing to, the main thing to say is, if you enjoy Vampire, Vampire the Masquerade, uh, the, we just you just had the finale of Leech, so um, that should go be and viewed. I also believe Amelia that you're having a rocking time on Game of Thrones. Oh yes. So if you like Game of Thrones, which who doesn't until we hit like season five, maybe, um, go check that out. And if you like finish finished pieces of work, don't even start the books because that's not happening. Anyway, <laughs> I have no reference, and my reasoning is in Zoom. All I see is a smiley face. Okay. Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fair enough reason. Um. So, last time we were drifting, we met all of the people who were going to be traveling from Sumalis, uh, it was a, oh Lord, uh, it was a Delac station on Sumalis, and you're going to be traveling to Prioris in the Encroacher system. Uh, the main reason for this is you picked up a VIP, uh, his name, it in my notes. <laughs> Sorry, I pulled up my notes, uh, my notation for uh, this episode. The first thing it says is do travel. Very, um, very descriptive right there. His name is Colin Newman, and he is a minor administrator for the Ring of Produce. Different rings on the inner council, inner um, government, you know, Ring of Produce, Ring of war ring of fire um 
and yes so that, that was the main reason for the travel it's pretty good uh, pretty good pay and the um the rest of the passengers are essentially like a little extra earnings seeing as you're going that way in general uh cream put a little bit of a shout out to uh just kind of like a traveling bulletin board type thing people signed up and turned up we got to meet some interesting people uh for you guys i did did i pin it in the in the drifting chat um, yes, I've, I've pinned it in the drifting chat, so if you need to refer to all of the passengers that are currently on the ship, um, you can refer to it there. And, uh... I think everyone thinks they're all assassins. Mm -hmm. Possibly the most suspicious ones are the three triplet kids. Children of the corn. Um, corn is convinced that they're all terrorists yeah just they might not be a problem okay even the 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 this four-year-old six-year-old that's probably an actual weapon oh okay disguised as a as a four-year-old so like screamers <laughs> yes. i think you're the only one who's gonna get that deep car <laughs> That's because we enjoy terrible media. <laughs> hey, the first Screamers is quite good. Good, yes. It's not great. <laughs> <laughs> like, quite good is about as far as I can push it. So, shall we get into it? I believe that's all yes, of please. the... Um... Okay. This may take a second. I do like this one, it, it may be not though. The... Yeah? I think so. Shit! Fuck! I sprint okay. across the room, and I dive over the table, and I pull the table over myself. I quickly reload. I fire some shots over the cover I'm behind. You hear the sounds of like uh, of like hurried footsteps that um that like stop and kind of like a whispered conversation as the as you fire the rounds over the top of the table. So Astrid. Have you just holed up in the in the engine room to like fight off the enemy yeah it's the space i know best that's for no one else knows the least yeah so. you, you even know know how to hide mm -hmm. um are you have you have you barricaded the room or have you uh taken up like essentially like an ambush position i want to barricaded it because then obviously it just gives away the fact that i'm in there that's true that's true so i will be Hiding up in the uh, the pipework above. Okay. As you are hiding, you hear the door like slide open, mm. and like very very light footsteps just go as someone like walks in, obviously very um, cautiously. Okay. Can I see them? Not yet. Know me. Hello. Where have you positioned yourself to fight off these? I am directly above, um, a, like a discarded additional weapon. Mm. It's on the floor, and I'm like full on spider. Like in a hallway. Between two ceiling pipes. Yeah. Above it, waiting for somebody to go for it. Okay, noted. 
Kareem. You're dead. Sorry. <laughs> I'm chilling. I'm oh, very spoilers. Okay Sorry. I mean, you know, it, it's. I'm lounging and having a snack. Yeah. While being dead. While being dead. Perfectly valid. Has anyone seen Kareem? She died. Fuck. That's sad. I'm surrounded. I need backup. Colton, you hear footsteps and a couple of like uh, sounds as uh, people head down the corridor towards where you are. How much time have you got left? I hear the footsteps of three people. I can probably take two. Location. Corner of storage bay four. I'm kind of pinned. Mummy. What? Where am I in relation to that? Uh, you're probably <laughs> up near the kitchen. That's where the best kind of like mm -hmm. hallway bit is. Um, if if I go in through the ventilation system, can I pop out near him? Um, you'd have to go through the power wire, the kind of vent, mm. vent, yeah. Not super safe, although safer now that they've been replaced. Yeah, fuck it, I'll do it. Okay, okay. You I kind trust of, Colton's wiring. You, you kind of, uh, like move yourself and then kick up into the vent and, mm -hmm. and start kind of like yeah, just sliding along. Pull pull up and just yeah. absolutely silently shimmying through these these pipes. As as you're kind of like getting towards the end, essentially it like drops off as it goes down to the next level. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very it's easy enough to kind of like shimmy down, but uh, you know, just gotta be a bit careful not to go too close to the wires. Mm -hmm. Um and uh you do hear footsteps uh co coming going down the corridor like uh maybe like 20 seconds 30 seconds after you've left technically speaking there is a panel in front of you as you go down so you could bust the panel open um if you want i want to time it so that it's the so that it happens just at the doorway to where Colton is. Well, Col Colton's uh, further down in the oh, cargo okay. bay. So in this, that, this in is that like case, I, I want to time the kicking the panel out for the exact moment that the last person passes it. Okay. So I'm, I'm basically going to jump full force onto it, onto the person. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm gonna kick a panel at a person. Are you going with the panel, like so? You fall, you kind of like. Yeah, but not landing on it because you can skid. Yeah, yeah. Probably yeah. like straddle it. The, the person. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. So yeah, you you hear um. You hear like. The footsteps going down the corridor towards the kitchen. Um, and then another set of footsteps, like, a bit heavier, a bit less subtle, like, clomping upstairs. And you hear, like, kind of, like, because you're, you're um, in the vents, essentially, you hear fairly deep murmurings and kind of, like, rrr, rrr, rrr. Um, and you hear them, like, go past the bit of the panel where you, uh, the bit of the vent where you are um, and start heading towards the uh where you left the gun on the on or the yeah gun on the floor an additional gun yes additional not even my gun no no <laughs> yeah full on attack instant just take take out the last one and gun aims for the one that's now running away from me okay so um you bust through the panel uh essentially as you bust through you see um, a fairly small figure, like uh, kind of midway. It's essentially just outside the doors of your um, 
uh, of your garden, uh, and then right in front of you, just stop, like climbing the last step, is a, a slightly larger figure, like facing away from you. I will shoot the figure. The one straight in front of you, or the one down the hallway? Um, so sorry, I've just I've have I kicked this panel? Yeah, I. Mm. I need to kick the happen. panel. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, kick the panel. Jumped out. Um, right in front of you, slightly larger person, just coming up, finishing coming up the stairs. Uh -huh. Further down the hallway by your um, garden, a uh, smaller figure, um, kind of uh, looking like they're around about the garden, maybe just picked it up or just about to bend down. Um, I will shoot the one that's going near my garden and simultaneously kick the other one in the head. Kick the other one in the head, okay. <laughs> so, so... No rolls needed for this because you know you know what you're doing. Um, oh, you know what? <laughs> I say that, but that's not 100% oh, no. true with the gun. Let's have a little look here. Yeah, I yeah I would I would say I would say gun combat. Okay. Um, make sure you, uh, you can you can have a boon for this one actually because it's Ooh, uh, it's a surprise attack. Uh. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> oh um. shit! <laughs> so um. Yeah, so you 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 bust out the paddle as you're flying towards the the guy um, in front of you, like your your foot kind of swings and connects with his head and like knocks him against the side of the wall. As you use that um, momentum of like your foot on his face, uh, you kind of like swing yourself around, do a spin, like land on your knees, um, take a shot at the person who is like going to pick up the gun um at simultaneously like bringing your foot down to make the guy's head uh like body hit the floor and your knee pushed up you, you know like your knee like rested on his neck you're obviously mm -hmm. not like but yeah. um and that all takes like like two seconds and there's a there's a man uh underneath your knee with like his hands kind of like there and um this is uh the the one over down down the end is uh one of the kids from the uh, Sune family mm -hmm. uh the single mother uh and the don't the... try and make me feel guilty for this thing you no no no, no i know i know uh and the the guy under your knee is the 23 year old uh the oldest kid in the oh, wow, this family is, this just got real awkward yeah and he's like oh hey hello i'll just take the gun oh, but make sure that the kid's dead, dead. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> and look down and go hello and to point the gun straight at his chest and pull the trigger yeah and then stand up, dust myself off, uh, and look around for something to hog tie him with. Oh God, <laughs> it's getting worse. Okay. Play the sexy music. Play it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm setting a trap for other people. I'm just observing all of this and laughing my head off. So, um. Colton. Uh, what... Astrid, how many pokies you got with you? How many what now? Pokies, enemies. I count. Just one. I can't see him though. Okay, I'm gonna make a break for the engine room. Right. Okay. Yes, sheepdog. <laughs> um, are you making a break for the engine room? Yeah. So, uh, I count. I count myself down. One, two, three. I mean, that's up, uh, but okay. Two, one. 
<laughs> I count up and then back down again. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the first count was how many people are in here. And I, and I um I stand up and I kick the uh the table I was using as cover. Yeah. And I take out I take out one and I switch to take out the second. I can't see the third one, so I start sprinting towards the engine room. Yeah. Uh so like so like there's kind of like a, a electronic kind of like crew uh sound as you like you like snapshot one, uh you see a like a movement in the corner of your eye and like swing round to the other like land off a couple of shots they both have that kind of like uh of getting hit and then you start running towards the um engine room you start running towards the engine room as you like run past uh the the cargo bear area towards the um power room you hear like a you hear like a clank of, of something being knocked over behind you and you hear someone say got you now And as you lay there, dead, a small, blonde, 14-year-old walks up to you and says, You have to go to the break room now, because that's where we're keeping all the dead people. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) What are you calling? There's snacks on the table. Uh, it was a 14 year old. God damn. Quick. Jackel! Jackel, I got the old one. Let's go. Let's get the, the one in the engine room. <laughs> and um you, you see you see what a what of the, the, the kid who's still there, like walk over, kind of like 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 double double handed obviously, like flip a switch on the gun and, and walk over to the uh to one of the kids who's like dead on the floor uh, and point the gun at them and like f- and fire off it essentially like the the display on the chest piece uh, goes from red to green um, and then they're getting their own back in the game I think we're outnumbered so they're going to start walking to the, towards the engine room um, where, just for your information, Astrid, um, a quite slim uh, girl is walking in, quite old, a uh, little bit younger than you, but um, again, one of the Tsune family, the the um, second oldest, the, the, the daughter. And just for the record, uh, Nomi, you're walking down the stairs, which means that you'll um, you'll come out. Let me double check this. Yeah, yeah. So you'll come out just in front of the locker rooms, um, which is which is essentially goes into the uh, the cargo bay where this whole thing just happened. So essentially, as they're going towards the engine room through the power generator place. Um, you could either head and see if anyone's been killed uh, in the break room, or um, you know, go looking for enemies. Uh, can I hide in a locker if there are people coming past this way? The the locker room was actually designated uh, off limits because there are actual guns in there. That's where all the actual uh, weapons and stuff have been so kept. Oh, disappointing. Um. um surprisingly conscientious you know like the 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 crew has decided hey let's not have live weapons around children Rules are made to be broken <laughs> come on if no one touches my guns i'll shoot you with what all of my guns yeah, all the I'll, other guns i have your gun every single gun i have <laughs> every simultaneously <laughs> it might take a week okay so what are you saying i'm walking down into the cargo bay yes that seems unwise. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
come back to me. Okay. I'm trying to wrap my head around geography. Okay. Uh, in, in that case, if you decide to go towards the, the power generator engine room, you'll, you'll probably be able to turn into this scene, depending on what happens yeah. with Astrid. Yeah, I think that would be, that would make sense. Uh, also, as a sidebar, uh, Kareen, Colton has just walked into the, um, the, uh, the break room. Oh, hey, is that fresh coffee? Yep, right there. Right. And here's some snacks. <laughs> oh. It's a Wait, lot less stressful these, being dead. No, I didn't oh, make okay. these. For Rome. That was all Rome. I just made the coffee. But I, I want to make coffee. coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so the the dead area is um, five on the map of the ship. Um, it's essentially just next to the bridge. So Astrid, go yeah. creeping in. She's quite quiet actually. Um, not not too quite stealthy. Was that the girl? Was that the girl who was in the before? Yes. Or is there two of them now? No, no, it, it's just, just the one so far. Okay. Although you can hear activity from further through, and like like a door opening and stuff, so there may be more people on the way. Okay. And she's like, she's like looking around. She's got like, she's got that really stupid um, action pose where she's got her gun pointed up in the air as she's looking around. Like, <sighs> you trying to shoot a bird? Um, <laughs> and ov obviously you're like up in the up in the the pipe works, kind of in the in the little dark corner, just kind of yeah. like like an angry Batman just waiting to strike. I actually want to wait until the rest of them come into the room. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't take too long. It's, it's maybe like thirty seconds, and she's like she's like peering behind, but trying not to touch the engine. Because there, there was a there was a lot of there was there was a few ground rules set, one of which was there's a few places you can go. No touchy though, like yeah, complicated thing. Don't don't go into the fuel rod area because I mean they're actually safe, but you never know yeah. what you never know what a kid's gonna try and lick. Before we so. started, I made sure everything was locked down yeah, and all yeah, the codes yeah. were on the consoles. Responsible like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um and. Uh, and yeah, um, a couple of uh, the, the the two blonde kids uh, from the triplets, uh, like much much more noise, and kind of like talking about how they killed the angry old man who takes everything way too seriously. Um, come walking into the into the engine room, like just guns at the side, kind of you know very casual, like ah we got this, we're winning. Um, and uh, one of them says. Is there anyone in here? And um, uh, Athana, which is the the girl's name, like looks around and kind of like semi startled, uh, and then goes, "I can't see anyone. No." It's like, oh well, uh, well, let's go find the 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 scary tall tall woman. I'm just gonna like send a whisper, but I'm gonna lean very close to the wall and try and almost like throw my voice a little bit mm. just, just sort of stop them from leaving the room I you'd probably have a few nuts and bolts and what um, what have you you could kind of do a yeah mm. I'll, um, I'll throw, throw one of those down there it's like, so I thought I'd catch their attention wait what's that are you sure there's no one in here it's like yes yes I looked but well, she didn't look hard enough did she Mmm, okay, okay, okay. So, it may surprise you to know, there is mm. no throwing your voice, <laughs> there is no throwing ah. your voice skill. Fair enough. Yeah. How however, we may yeah. be able to figure out something that would make sense. Well, that's not, the, that's not actually the main thing I, I want to do, okay. kind of. But, um, so basically, I want to say to the kids, you'll know that if you took me on with these laser like, tags, I'd win straight out. Be no fun in it. So, what say? We drop the laser guns, and first one to hit my chest piece with their fist or their foot. Wins. 
they're like they're like paused and kind of looking around trying to figure out where you are let's get a stealth roll at this point i feel mm -hmm. uh, should be throwing your voice 100 percent is deception so i was gonna say deception yeah. <laughs> yeah but i mean i've been i've been talking but trying to hide so uh see if i'm still being stealthy enough so i'm not i'm not locked in here with you you're locked in here with me. <laughs> All right. So I've clicked it back and forth and put it on to normal. Okay. Stealth and modifier. What is happening? <laughs> I don't know, but I like it. Okay. I, th I think roll 20 is so upset that it never gets to roll anything that it's just like keep rolling me i do well i do work for you also just a just a small sidebar it's something i, I realized at the end of last episode i haven't rolled yet in this in the campaign just an interesting fact <laughs> okay so weird um i'm still hidden they can't really yeah, no they, they 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 are like they're like searching all around like shouted into a pipe or something. It's come Tell out you somewhere what, kids. else. Here's a. Uh, maybe this will help change minds, and I will actually throw my gun down. Okay. So I mean it. I'm unarmed. And uh, okay, uh, Athana, um, like kind of turns around like kind of a, a bit more casual uh like crouches down like hands or knees to the kids and go why don't you two go and find the the tall lady and kill her and i'll deal with this one okay and they're like okay and they like run out and, and then um she uh she like puts her hand like that and slowly puts her gun on the floor and is then like I still don't know where you are I'm just gonna drop down like Assassin Creed like render at 14 frames per second and then just appear in front of her <laughs> okay <laughs> and, and she like she like kind of puts her puts her hands up like one fist right in front of her nose so you could just like smack it and you know it's, it's very very bad form and she says i must warn you i'm very bad at fighting oh it's unfortunate for her that i'm really good at unarmed melee yeah come on then sheepy roll for me <laughs> so she can't fight so there's no need for a roll. She she's a, she's essentially going to like edge I forward. I just want to toy. I just want to toy with her a bit and just like. Yeah, yeah. She's 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 gonna Every like. Time she reaches out. She's gonna like edge forward towards you and then like half half heartedly like go go for a punch to the to the breastplate. And you just oh. like you just kind of are you are you like slipping the 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 shots? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she's um. She takes a jab and you just kind of roll with it and it's like oh almost but not quite just the the fist goes past and she like stumbles forward a little bit and Aww. and like and like jumps back like you're gonna hit her and then you don't she's like okay you want to make it easy how, how many how many shots do i get if i <laughs> Okay, okay. She like, like uh, does does that with her hands, like down by her sides, and like like jumps from foot to foot. I don't know, who knows why? Um, and, and she 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 kind of she kind of comes in again, and she does like a, a one two, except for the one is quite long because obviously you know you kind of like just jump back a pace and she kind of like goes into it and then the two's like stumbled and 
you know, very uh, amateurish. If you'd, if you'd like, you could even, like, it's, it's so weak that you could just... There you go. <laughs> just, that? just like, grab a hand and push it back? Yeah, you can have that one back. Okay. Um... Couldn't we just do the guns? Because I feel like I have more of a... Ch and then she just jumps at you, like, both, both arms out. <laughs> All right, I'm absolutely rolling for this. Okay. Yeah. What do you want to happen? All right, she's going to do that. I'm going to sort of like in one side sweep motion, sort of like collect both her wrists together with this one hand. And use my foot and just trip her feet up from underneath because I've got a hold of her hands. I'm just gonna then gently lower her down to the floor and just sort of like stand looking over her. I genuinely thought that was going to work. <laughs> I didn't, but I let you. It's so, do I lose? Yeah. And then I'll reach over, pick up one of the guns, just go. Crap. I, I guess I'll just stay here until someone frees me. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to walk out the end room and I'm going to lock the door. Good luck. As the door opens, you just see two hogtied small children with no <laughs> just putting a, <laughs> putting a shot into each of them. Oh, nice job. Thank you. No Is fair! That... You're not allowed you have to, to tie go us to up. to the dead room now. We can't move. Crawl. It is not my responsibility to locate you from here to the dead room. You must go yourselves. Wait. Tell me how they're supposed to crawl. Like that. Carefully. What's supposed to go upside down? Do like a little crab thing? That would work. Do the crab thing. They like look at each other. I'm gonna like untie their legs and then like pick them up by the back of the arms and stand them. Push them in that direction. Thank you, Astrid. Where's the dead room? Right, Graham. Okay. Nomi looks as close to sulking as you've ever seen her. <laughs> Don't worry, there's a whole she, she will march them to the dead room. Okay. And poke her head in. Hey, Nomi. Hello. And she'll turn it on to re -alivify and shoot him. Squash is on the left. I'm not dead. I'm talking to the kids. Oh. We shot him. He died. Mm. In the back. Very good. And they go over and get some squash. I'll look Bring at Kareem the news feeds. and go to go to shoot her. And unless you put up a fight, you're coming back to life. <laughs> <laughs> I might I might like lean away and and have you shoot the couch and be like, oh, right, that's helpful. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> a natural impulse, I suppose. I'll shoot her again. <laughs> <Damn> <laughs> See you in two minutes, Green. Okay. <laughs> um. Oh, I thought I brought Colton back to life. Yeah, you, she's just I'm, hanging out. I'm reading the news feeds. <laughs> Nobody looks I'm very disappointed duty. and leaves the room. <laughs> As I'm walking past, I'm just going to get known by the colors that come on. There's still some more. We're going to go. Where? Um. We got the sphere down by the engine room. There was There's two left. Two more. We split off a stick together. I'll stay with you. I'm just following. Oh, Green's here. Hi, Green. Hi. Hi I'm Green's probably going to die quick, but you guys can totally use me as cannon fodder, distraction, whatever. I'm good with it. Excellent. Okay. I'm going to push Green in front of us. Come on. 
<laughs> just push her out into the into the call guard room. In you go. I'm uh, just it, like slowly walking around, looking like, around, oh, oh. like immediately <laughs> as you get pushed out into the call guard room. Uh, there's the click and zap of the of the guns um, from somewhere in the cargo room. Uh, <laughs> if you if you'd like, you can go to like dodge it or you know something like that. Or if you're like, oh no, I got shot. God, I've got to go back to the break room. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would <laughs> like to be able to tell where they shot me from. Okay. If I could. Uh, that will be a. I would say. Um, Thing. Uh, there was a investigators recon. Uh, I would say technically speaking, recon would probably be the most uh, or investigate. Um, I'll go with recon. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> that was, I think that was with a boon, was it? Um, but oh, what? I guess. Even I with the like even it. with the boon, it would have been successful. <laughs> even without without the boon, it would have been successful because and that's just two sixes. It's hard to argue. With two sixes. <laughs> also, technically speaking, recon is kind of your thing. So. Um, yeah, so I I would like be like oh darn came from that way though. <laughs> yeah, like it, 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 it's, oh no ah. Ah no, I got shot. Ah, oh, oh, war is hell. They're over there, and just point, <laughs> just points to like a corner where there's a whole stack of like um, kind of discarded uh, crates and and miscellaneous uh, metallic things. Uh, Colton immediately, hey, yeah, <laughs> immediately the second that Kareen leaves, Kareen comes back. Coffee's on the right. Thanks. Hmm. So I'll, no. I'll, I'll, I'll try. Karen. Nomi will lean slightly out of that doorway, like not letting any major body parts go, but she'll pull a small bag of flour she's stolen from the kitchen and just hurl it in the direction of where the fires come from. Okay. Yeah, it, it kind of like, it loops and then lands and just like, just this kind of like cloud. I want to say gas cloud, but you know, you know what I mean. Like it's, it's this cloud mm -hmm. of, of of flour just uh, erupts. Proper war zone now. And you you hear like pitter patter of feet on metal. Um, you also hear um, from like the other end of the cargo room. You hear uh, uh, hello. How is how is the war going? Are you winning? Is this inside the cargo room we're here in this morning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like down the other side where all the where the shower is and where the the bunks are and everything. Mm. It, it's just um um, it's the the medic dude. Kind of like like peers around. Uh... Was he playing? No, 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 no. He's definitely not playing. It was only the kids who were playing. I might hog tie him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no. You wandered into a war zone. What do you expect? It's also it's also where they're all sleeping. In his defense. And you've just gotten to thrown flour over them all. Yes. Well, the 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 flower throat was to the side, like uh, in a corner, so didn't hit anyone else. It's still excessive, just for the record. I'm just trying to obscure their vision. What? All right. Um. Inside the. Uh, I'm just glad you didn't blind the, the, them. The, <laughs> the cargo room. Is there time. like anything like up and above or around that we could like? Um, like way up at the top of the, the, the cargo room kind of like ceiling, there, there are some cranes and, uh, you know, like uh, metal bars that kind of go along and across. Getting up there would essentially expose you way too much and be super difficult and a little bit dangerous. How high up is it? Um, the, the cargo room's a good, like, 20 meters. Okay, that's too high then. Ugh. I was wanting to try and give Nomi, like, a boost up onto something. Yeah. Oh, you know what we could do? 
Emmy. Hmm. You know what we could do? There's this old trick we always used to pull. Back where I used to live. Um, called it three raccoons in a trench coat. Three... Would they not need individual trench coats? No. It... No, it's one, it's one trench coat. <laughs> one trench coat, three raccoons. But in this case, it's two raccoons. Who has done this to them? No, they voluntarily got under the trench coat. Now, anyway, okay. It, <laughs> it's like a, st a stacking method. Stacking raccoons. I yeah. Fucking hell. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, if this is just, if this is going to carry on, I feel like. Carry on. <laughs> Stacking recruits. <laughs> Rain, give me your gun. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I'm going to sprint. And dive around the corner, and John Wu, the two that are coming to save the hogtied ones. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, they are like nominally behind cover, but they've kind of like run out of the uh, custom. In that case, let me just. Uh... You see this old man's hat. <laughs> <laughs> I, gra I grab Kareem's gun. And I you just. Hit it right over. <laughs> As you're looking through the car, you just see this old man just slowly spinning <laughs> out of the doorway. Yeah, the 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 two kids, um like the second that you come like flying out and start start firing, uh one of uh the the boy uh like moves in front of the girl and takes the shots on the chest. And then she like puts her arm on 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 his her uh, hand on his shoulder, her gun through underneath his arm, and starts like they both start running towards you and firing. Uh, so I with Kareen's gun, I throw it up into the air as if like, hey, catch this. Yeah. As they do, I put my hand on the my my mechanical hand on the floor, and just do the handstand from the Matrix. And just shoot under the first guy and take her out, and then take the first guy out, and then land on my feet. <sighs> Never should have come here. Oh. Crap. Colton, we were gonna do three recruits in a trench coat, and you just ruined it. And they need their own trench coats. Exactly. It's three o'clock, it's dinner time. So, I'm <laughs> <Unseen>. seen. <laughs> oh <my> God. <laughs> the, the fallen all come into the into the re uh, the I was gonna say restroom because it's where you rest, but that's not what a restroom is. <laughs> Come into the break room, uh, sit down, uh, Kareen, I assume you're going to, to hand out, you know, um, and just, they're, they're kind of like, they're mostly chatting excitedly. The triplets are incorrigible, um, like they're, they're boasting about how they killed the old man twice, which isn't true, but, um, <laughs> uh, and the, the, the twelve-year-old, the girl, Jeannie, uh, she's um, talking about how she got shot in the back and then hogtied. Um, the the ones who are quiet, uh, the the twenty-one-year-old, um, the uh, the nineteen-year-old, Athane, Athana, uh, it hasn't actually turned up yet. Um, and the two who you shot at the end. Uh, the the our, our own and Terra are kind of quiet and just chatting by themselves. They don't really mix with the other kids. 
Um, and yeah, they're, they're just chatting and, and kind of um, hanging out. One thing that's become apparent is, like, A, their parents, grandparents, and sundry others who look after them are very thankful for the times you guys, you know, kind of distract them. Um, and also, there's not much to do on a ship for kids, so it, it's 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 good to um, oh no, let's show them spread. the horrors of war. Yeah, this is gonna be like space butlins. <laughs> oh no. Nomi will kind of look at the the lad that she'd hogtied and kind of narrow her eyes at him, wondering how he managed to get out of the hogtide. But she won't vocalize any of this, so she's just looking yeah, she's, at him she's, really she's weird. She's just staring at him, and he's um kind of like can feel it burning even when he's like even when he's like reaching down like grabs his drink when he when he goes to like drink you can see his, the like cup shaking very like <laughs> very slightly puts it down like kind of does a little glance like he's trying to sneak a peek and sees that you're just blatantly just staring at him and it just kind of like has his head down um You okay? You look like you have a concussion. No, I'm, I'm, I'm fine, thank you. Okay. Uh, does Does anyone know where where Athana is? Which hmm. one's Athana? <laughs> um, uh, my sister, uh, the the older one. The blonde one. Brunette. Darker. Darker. That's what was my next guess. I'm going to leave the table and go to the engine room. Okay. <laughs> uh, when you walk into the uh, into the engine room, like, Athada's, like, splayed on the, on the floor of the engine room, and, like, her head kind of pops up, and she goes, Hello, have you come to kill me again? Uh, yeah, game's just finished. We're just sitting down for dinner. Oh, okay. And she, like, she like, gets up. And she's, I'll help her up. Astrid went and sat down for dinner and left her there. Oh my god, she was in there! I forgot that I locked her in the engine room! The, floor, <laughs> the floor's really cold in here. Yeah, um... Yeah, so I did. Mm. Who won? Oh, uh, well, we, we won. Yeah, uh, it's just, it all happened in other part of the ship so no end up coming down this way that's why you didn't get found oh, okay um yeah you guys take it really games really seriously do we what's for dinner game oh <laughs> um what is for dinner sheepy oh god it's in my notes <laughs> what's this in his notes fuck off <laughs> <laughs> don't don't GM shame me? I don't know. Um, oh, yes. Uh, so, um, Joshua and Mila, the two uh, mothers who, you know, um, they made uh, pulled pork sandwiches and shaved potato crisps with gravy. I can tell you it's an absolute banging meal for dinner tonight. Yeah. Which we're missing out on, so come on, let's go quickly. And I'm just gonna like put my arm through hers and just like, what really? Okay, nice, okay. I'm missing out on food. I'm very hungry. <laughs> I left the dinner table for this morning. You also left her there for the dinner table. <laughs> Details. It's it's understandable. <laughs> Semantics. It's fine. So um, just just so you know how much of an idiot I am, uh, it, it's it's like you know those kind of uh bap. Uh, pulled pork sandwiches where there's more pork than than bread mm. uh, kind of like dr drizzled in the sort of like you know barbecue type sauce um, he's doing it again chat Jesus and then the the potato uh... <laughs> yeah when you play a game or watch drifting like play or watch drifting 
bring food with you, because, um... Yeah, I want to order takeout now, thanks, Shiki. Happen. Me too, me too. Uh, so the shaved potato crisps, they're not, like, crisps, but they're that type of... They're essentially, like, like cheese grater shaved uh, from a potato, so they're super, super thin, and then fried. <laughs> and then baked after fried. Um, so anyway, should we just fuck the game? Let's go order food. I'm hungry <laughs> now. I want, I want pulled pork sandwiches. I want pizza. Um, coffee. Together. So, question. I assume there's definitely a couple of people here who will not be paying attention. Um... And just eating their food because that's what they do. I'm looking at Colton and Astrid right now, and Kareen a little bit. But um, is is there anyone who's like paying attention to the kids? It's not super important, but I, I can tell you like how they all approach food. Nomi would be watching the kids just yeah. out of fascination. Yeah. But also a little alarmed by how noisy everything is. Nomi, Nomi's like, this is the first time I've seen human children in the wild <laughs> why are they doing that why why isn't anybody stopping them they do feed in herds <laughs> damn it um so the triplets um they're messy as hell like half half of the um and this this is both of the boys and <laughs> All right. Bless you. Bless you. You actually said that was achoo. fucking adorable. Yeah. Oh. I got told off for saying achoo when I sneeze, but that's how you sneeze. <laughs> I have no control. <laughs> so. That's how humans sneeze. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, sorry. Carry on. Uh, the the majority, the, like half of the half of the filling of the sandwich ends up in their laps. And then scoops up and eats them separately. Uh, and yeah, that that's both of the boys and the girl. Uh, they are very messy. Um, the uh, the old older boy, um, technically a man, I guess, uh, or will be when Nomi's done with him, right? <laughs> Whoa! Oh, <sorry. laughs> Oh, jeez. <laughs> I think this tells us more about you than it does about Nomi. He, um... <laughs> he... I, I'm sorry, but chat started it. It wasn't me. Uh, he, he's... Well, if chat jumped off a cliff, would you follow them? He, yes, if they monetize me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You can put it on as a Patreon goal. Or something. <laughs> I, I jump off cliff with you. Um, what an owl from my coffee shop. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he, he eats like tidily, but, you know, enthusiastically, as do all the other kids in his family who are with you. Uh, the youngest girl and youngest boy weren't weren't involved. They're like six and ten, so it, it's a bit more. Um... And the uh, uh, the the two with their grandparents, uh, that's our own and Terra. Uh, they eat a little bit separately, kind of by themselves. And the way they eat is a little strange, just purely because it doesn't matter what's on whose plate. They just take from each other's plates and they essentially eat in what what's it called in synchronization you know like they just kind of without thinking and uh yeah after a a, a nice hearty dose of the harsh realities of war presented to children um Everyone gets a, a nice meal and just kind of separate. The the triplets go fucking careening off. Uh, no offense, Kareen. Um, and uh, ev everyone else is a little, a little bit slower. Um, still reasonably high energy for the most part. Um, 
and the the break room is is left uh mostly um quiet and and empty with uh you guys in there so uh, let's get up to speed a little bit because we did kind of like just jump into an open battle uh it's been a, it's been about three four days uh since you um started off on the journey you've got uh probably like two weeks left uh kareen like your best estimate is two weeks um you've been worried about the navigational chart so you probably may want to go have a look and just make sure you're still on still on course uh, again at some point and let's have a look here yes um everything else seems to be running pretty smoothly uh astrid fuels all good uh you've got the fuel rods needed to get there and back and have some spare so probably after this trip you may want to restock talk to the captain mm -hmm. about that so well day uh romy's been kind of happy not being the only one with some culinary skills um one thing you may have noticed is that he's been a lot more enthusiastic about dinner when he's not cooking. This may or may not have something to do with the rest of you being pretty crap at cooking in general. And also Corrine existing. Sorry, Corrine. Hey now, Astrid made the best cheese and baked bean toasties you've ever eaten in your life. Hey, I haven't cooked yet. Shut up. I mean, you, you, you will have cooked, but... I will have uh, cooked, but we've not had my dinner We haven't had your dinner scene, though. I don't think we've had a Nomi one either yet, so mm. that's something to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll notice there is a live pot of basil. Like, just... just I feel going to say, like, cows or pigs or yeah, something. I, I was, <laughs> yeah, a pot of live pigs. I, I was that's about, what we call it. I was about to say, when you say live... Um, it's like still growing yeah. in soil, so you can pick off leaves um, in the kitchen now. But it's just got written in big block cap capitals on the pot. No, Kareem. <laughs> Kareem's looking and going. That's half a meal. Kareem's got to learn to do that. The the. You know, instead of the <laughs> handful, bam. <laughs> oh, that, yeah. yeah. You watch Kareen be the greatest cook in existence. She just doesn't want to have to do it again, so she made such a poor job of it. <laughs> oh, it's like making a shit cup for the first time around. Hey! <laughs> that only works if you're not very particular with your uh, tea. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just really bad. I'm great at making coffee. I am... Best coffee, best coffee maker on the ship. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the, uh, essentially, as we travel, um, there will be opportunities to essentially you know, if, if you want to talk to any of the other crew members, any of the NPCs, any of the, sorry, the passengers, um, there's the opportunity there. If you just literally want to be like, hey, what's your name? What do you do? What's that like? Feel free. Or if you want to get more in depth. Uh, the only person that can be difficult to talk to, just purely because he is kind of a VIP, uh, would be Colin Newman. Um, you haven't had too much interaction with him. He eats his meals separately, and uh, he seems to be fairly isolated, I guess, from the rest of the the, the passengers and, and the crew and everything. Um, but, you know, it just means you don't know what he's like, essentially. Uh, and, in, in fact, um, as, as your... Uh, all kind of still in the break room. Um, a uh, very short person wanders in, a little bit um, 
uh, hesitantly. Uh, it is... Oh, I don't have his name. Yeah, where is it? There it is. Uh, it's um, Joni. And he like he like pauses as he walks in, see you all sitting there with your you know like clean plates and just finished up eating, and says, "Uh, uh who, who's who's uh, I'm I need to send a message. Who sends messages?" Um, I can probably help you with that. Okay, I I just want to send a message ahead, if if that's all right. I have the. I have the the address needed. I I just need access to the um the 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 clicker. Um, you can you can just record the message in your space, like in your sleeping space, via the AI, and just let me know when you're ready to send it, and I'll forward it along. Oh, okay. Do you want me to come and find you and tell you that I've done it? Or is there a way I can throw it at you? Um, just let the, tell the AI and it'll pop up for me. And that's the cat? You can also access it uh, via, there's a, there should be a button right next to your bunk. Oh, okay. Well, I will go and do that then. Uh, I hope you all had a nice war. Um, I heard you won. Is in war. He was actually very chill. Surprisingly so. I'm going to go record my message. Good luck. Thank you. Bye. And just like turns and kind of wanders out. <laughs> There are no winners in war. <laughs> I'm Batman. That uh, sounds like a loser talking. Uh, so yeah, we um, unless anyone, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just yeah. ask if you wanna know. <laughs> Literally have one arm and one eye. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think Naomi will be paying a little bit more attention to the Culver kids. Um, she doesn't want to scare them because she's getting vibes from mm. them. Um, but they'll just be a little bit of averted eye, like, flicking up eye contact with a slight smile and then moving her eyes away. Like, if if you're trying to befriend a scared cat. Yeah. Like, just making herself not a threat. You just gotta, you just gotta sit there, let them get used to your presence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just, yeah okay. like, slow blink. <laughs> yeah, you you see them notice you, um, and essentially like their awareness is just a little bit kind of not for they're not obvious about it, but they're just kind of like you know a bit more tense. Mm -hmm. Um. Their, their grandparents, sorry, their great grandparents are um, a bit more oblivious, um, a bit more kind of like uh, they're very doting. Um, mm -hmm. They make sure that the the kids are happy and you know uh, spoil them a little bit too much. But they're fairly conscientious kids as well. Mm -hmm. Like they don't really they don't. Like, the, the triplets are assholes, basically. <laughs> like, you know, adorable assholes, but still assholes. Um, and the, the big family is essentially the mother, Joshua, being very uh, put upon and frazzled. Uh, while the two older kids, uh, the, the boy and the girl, um, uh, Steiny and Athana, essentially like corral the younger ones as much as possible and try and like share the load of, of dealing with them uh, if they made eye contact and kind of got comfortable with her at some point as she's clearing her plate away mm. she'll uh, just kind of lean down say if you need somewhere quiet to go 
you are welcome to visit the garden. It's lovely. Thank it's you. peaceful there. And uh, the the uh, the the girl looks up and says, "New tomorrow." As you wish. And she'll carry on clearing her plate and yeah. head off. Anyone else want to creep out some kids? <laughs> Kareen's mostly trying to stay away from them. <laughs> That's fair. Anytime any of the kids try to talk to Colton, He's probably just going to carry on walking and then go into the locker room, which is out of bounds. Yeah. <laughs> just close the door. Busy. Uh, your your bunks will be uh, also obviously out of bounds. So, um, Essentially, the the three places where you're safe is your bunks, uh, locker room, and uh, bridge. So, going forward, probably keep goes. that in mind. I walk through the to in order to go to the um, electrical bay. Wait, what's it called? Generator room. I'll just go, every time I will just go through the locker room because they can't follow me, and then I'll walk all the way around. Yeah, that's yeah, right. right. Hi. And then I just come into the room from the locker room, and I walk out back into my generator room. Yep. Yeah. How is the generator doing, Sheepy? Um, oh, good question. I need to refer to my notes. Of course you do. Don't say it like that. Da -da 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 -da. Yes. Uh, so the generator room is doing fine. You are held by the captain. Um... So this, yeah. So so this will essentially be like probably about five days into the trip. Um, Colton. Yeah. Uh, we've um had a little bit of uh, flooding with the makeshift pipes. It's nothing serious, but it could become a problem as we keep going. I was wondering if you could maybe uh, just take a look at it and, and make sure it's all, I don't want to say ship shape, but um, essentially not too much is loose or dripping. Maybe put a pan under the, the dripping parts. Ah, uh, right. Yep. Pan. <laughs> just take a look at it and, and see if you can uh, minimize the flooding. Copy. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll go do that. Okay. Um, yeah, there's there's like there's like three points where essentially the it, it was very makeshift. Um, essentially, just attaching it to the to the water reservoirs to pump through for uh, for showers, etc. So that they don't have to go to one of your bunks and and shower, etc. Um, there's about three points where uh. One of them's like the the pipes uh, that you that you got aren't really like fused together quite properly. Um, there's like small little gaps where when the water rushes through, it essentially just kind of like like sp springs a leak almost. Like it's like a like a jet of, a small kind of jet of water, like a sprinkler. Mm. Um, there's another one that's just constantly dripping. Um, it's it's nothing kind of like forceful. It's just kind of like uh, I don't know a, v a very small uh, uh, mismatch of things. Um, okay, I'll um I'll wrap because I got some extra flux tape because yeah. mine went missing somewhere. Yours did go missing, but you got more. Mm, I got some more. Um, so I'll wrap that pipe up again. Okay. Um, I'll check. There's no electricals near this. Uh, near the, near the second one, 
uh, the way the the way the ship is is kind of like situated, essentially like it will pull up when it gets to a certain uh, like volume, it'll start like running and then essentially there's like a couple of like metal bars that stop it immediately running off. Once it goes over that, it will run off and then down into some electrical wires and stuff. Not amazing. Might short it out. Um, okay. Warning, I'm turning water off uh, an hour. Better go to the toilet quick. That's just like a general shout you're not looking yeah. for. Yeah, yeah that's, that's through the ship comes. Nomi will instantly get up and go to the toilet. Like, in in the bathroom, not yeah. where she stands. <laughs> I did assume. <laughs> she gets instantly. <laughs> or, although, oh, okay. she, has, she has been starting to consider gathering people's ex excretions for... Yeah, but we're all good for that right yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. We're good for excretion right now. Yeah. I mean, I know I'm full of shit. So full of shit, the toilet's no, jealous. Nobody acknowledge him. <laughs> don't, don't give him attention. That's what he wants. PayPal dot Emmy forward slash. So yeah, um, shut off the shut off the water for an hour. Shut off the water. Um, mop it up. Um, the where when it if it does overflow and go all the way, I'd like to um. Maybe wrap those wires, move them up a yeah. bit higher, like hold them up, uh, and then I'll stick some buckets under oh, the drips. I was going to say you can also flex tape it, because they're, they're essentially like kind of... Just lift them up a bit, so yeah. the worst comes to the worst, it shouldn't short. Unless it, it gets like real bad. Um, the... The, underneath. the first one, uh, which is the, the like sprinkler, um, that just needs to be like... Uh, unscrewed a bit, moved a bit, and then screwed back in properly. Just essentially, you know, like, not a, not a rush job. But um, Oh, if I can fix that, if yeah. I can fix that, I'll do that. The The second one is a bit more obscure. Yeah. Uh, essentially, like, you're not 100% sure, but you think a little quick bit of welding should, you know, like, in the area where it's leaking, should uh, fix it. And you can always... The, the the person who knows nothing that his sheepdog wants to say unweld it later? <laughs> Is that a thing? Uh, Astrid. Yellow. <sighs> the dupia. Come on, quickly. Time's money. I need some welding done. Alright, uh, I mean, it's gonna cost you, but... Okay, I will pay you one bullet between the eyes. Bit aggressive, but alright. Oh, cool. Hey, no. Where are you? I cocked my gun to let everyone know I just made a joke, even though no one knows. <laughs> That's why I'm cocking my gun. <laughs> Some people know. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm by the makeshift showers. Alright, I'll be there in a minute. I will grab the welding gun, uh, leave the engine room, uh, lock it before I leave, and head up to where Colton is. Okay. It, it's a pretty simple welding job. Take you a good five minutes most. And I will get to work. Yeah. Uh, welding goggles on. Um... And essentially, yeah, like it, it's again, it's a bit of a bodge job, but the whole shower, you know, setup anyway is a bit of a bodge job. So get it done quite quickly. I really like my um my cigar on the hot metal. <laughs> really? Nice. That's good welding. Like a stack of pennies. I just said, I just turn out and just go out there. <laughs> yep. Um, 
Yeah, water back on and make sure there's buckets there in case it fails. I mean, it's a bodge job, so it, it yeah. might. It, it, it should now, um, at, at the very least, if it does leak, it won't be much enough to be caught in a bucket or whatever and, you know, over, <laughs> over the first couple of days at the very least, th there's no sign of, like, any major leakage, maybe a few drips, maybe a few drops, but... That's I all. keep checking the buckets and emptying them when yeah. necessary. Not super necessary so far, I'll let you know. <laughs> um, just because I mentioned it earlier, Kareen... The navigational thing. I, I assume you want to go. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, I'd basically be camped out in the bridge anyway, trying you to stay avoiding away. the kids. Yeah, the small humans. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> so I would just be in there, checking over everything, kind of as as needed. Okay. Um, uh, for this one because this is a very interesting and slight thing that's hard to notice. Please give me a, uh, without boon, uh, astrogation. Okay. Um. okay. Enough to be successful, and the streak of not rolling below nine is continuing. <laughs> so around about like four or five days in you realize that the charts that you have along with the ship of course are slightly old and, uh, you know it's an older model it's seen somewhere in tear the charts for the systems and for the planets are a little bit old and the interesting thing about the interesting thing about a prioris is its um its orbit shifts very slightly as time goes on so over 50 years over 100 years it's not in the same place it would be so you have to continually adjust if you have older uh, charts and older like navigational plotting tools essentially when you get to Prioris, you'll be a good, like, five hours away from it. Um, you know, like, it won't be there when you reach your destination. Can't I just adjust for that if I know what Yes. It is? But it was not something that was, um, you know, apparent because... It, it... But it's, a... it's apparent now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. Um, that okay. that was essentially what the role was to notice that the uh, charts were um, out of date and very slightly off. Yeah, so I'd probably like stand over it and be like, "Huh, okay, that's fine. I can fix that." And I would, you know, make the necessary adjustments um, so that we get there instead of taking a detour, basically. <laughs> uh, a correct but actually incorrect detour. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 uh, again, going off your astrogation rule, it's no difficulty to essentially, like, cost, uh, like, manually plan in, uh, alteration to the course. Um, just moving a couple of decimals, basically. So, should be fine. Um, while you're, while you're doing that and just essentially hanging out in the, in the bridge, uh, there's, like, a, on your door. Hello? Hello? Yes. Hi. I have the message. Oh, great. Did, did, you could have just sent it via I, AI. I tried to put it in the cats, but the cats ran away. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, can I pull it up? Is it, like, recorded? Uh, did you let him in? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's just got, a, like, a, like, a jack that, um, oh. he's kind of, like, recorded and, and taken out and hands it to you. There you go. Um, uh, details of where it needs to go is on there. Okay. Sure. I'll get this sent out. Thank you. And he um, turns and walks off. 
question. If we're plugging something into the ship that that is from a questionable source, do we have some kind of quarantine? Yeah, yeah. So um, you can you can basically pull up a, a like um, isolated uh, console, or you can isolate a console and then just just pull it up. And if it does uh, release infected whatnots, uh, then it's just on that console. It doesn't spread to the rest of the ship. Yeah, I think I would do that just because I'm paranoid. <laughs> That's um, and I don't know who these people are. So I would just like turn to the side and use like a spare console on the side, and, you know, get that all set up so that it was isolated properly and then plug it in. And I wouldn't look at the message because it's none of my business, but I would just make sure that it's not doing anything weird to our systems and then send it off. Yeah, no, it's, it's just... Uh, um... It, it, it's it's just a, a video file and uh, essentially directions uh, in terms of where to send the message. <clears throat> and, you know. Um, and then I'd still have it. So. Yeah. I just kind of like stick it in my pocket to give to him later and then probably forget unless he asks me. Okay. <laughs> and I, you know, I have to ask. You're not gonna. You're not gonna look at the message. No, I'm. Well, he didn't say it was private. He didn't. I mean, I'm not telling you to look at the message, but it's is my job as GM to be like. Mm, are you sure you're not gonna look it up? Uh, maybe. <laughs> well, okay. So <coughs> I did. I did make sure that it wasn't gonna interact with our system or anything like yeah, that. I think safe. I'd leave it alone, unless. Unless, unless there was something, cause to... Yeah, yeah, unless there was cause. I'm I'm literally, like, scrolling it away in my jumpsuit to kind of be like, to... if he asks me for it, or if I need to look at this later. <laughs> Plus I, there's a log. Well, yeah, I, I, my guess would be Kareen would actually be like, I'm just going to give it back to him when I see him next. And in reality, it's like, I'm just going to put this in my pocket and forget about it until, like, he asked for it. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, um, that's fine. I, I, I know for a fact that Kareen isn't too fussed about these things, you know, like, you know, whatever. I also know that Tess is like, I already want to know what's on that message, Sheepy, please tell me. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so, well done for sticking out, staying strong. So, uh, I'm gonna make you tell me after the show. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Okay. That's fair. <laughs> so, this is a, a good moment to um, ask if anyone has people they want to talk to, um, if uh, anyone has things they want to do as we carry on in time uh, and travel. Uh, I think Nomi will have been keeping an eye on the fact, I believe, unless I've got the timing wrong, it's been a week since she made that bet with Colton. Yes. Um, but now it's probably not the time, what with half of that combo not here. <laughs> <laughs> so she's just going to be running the gun drills. Oh, 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 like magic. Colton steps out of the shadows like you can <laughs> <him>. Sorry. This <laughs> what? I, I believe Nomi wants to uh, uh, finish that wager. Yeah. She'll just show up wherever you're working or wherever you're standing. And stand like, in I'm, front I'm, of you. I'm like working on the desk. Like yeah. you come in. Yeah. No, the storm yeah. would come. It has been one week. Stop it. This isn't what- this isn't the song! <laughs> that, these are just children, you can't- I object to- Are you prepared? I believe so. This won't be easy. Well, I only had a week. <clears throat> If it weren't easy, where would we 
the satisfaction. Mm. Let's do it. She'll fall down, like, full yoga pose again without using her hands, just, like, fold up to be cross-legged on the floor. Yep. <laughs> Colin just, like, brass checks. Fucking does ridiculous, stupid shit. Let's sit down in front of him. You ready? We'll see. And Colin pulls down his blindfold over his other eye as well. Mm. Nomi, so <laughs> <laughs> Nomi pulls a strip of fabric out and ties it around her own eyes. Not that he can see that. Okay. <laughs> so, we are about to have a gun off, a gun assembly <laughs> off, a gun maintenance off. Um, I believe, uh, Nomi, you have... Um, Gun maintenance is a thing now, don't you? Mm hmm. Uh, Colton, do you have gun maintenance? Uh, um, no, I don't have maintenance. Okay. I'll just roll Jack of, Jack of Trades. I but, mean, we can both assume that we're doing this well. It's just who wins, right? So, th this for, yeah, um, for you, Colton, this would probably be gun combat just because it's within the, the wheel of that. And it's going to be more dexterity than intellect. Okay. Can I use dexterity for mine? Oh no, I am. I, I, I think it should. Do, don't I? I think it should be dexterity. Yeah. Yeah, it's knowledge dexterity. Okay. And am I rolling with Boone again because it's highly practiced? I get. We'd probably both be. So we might as well just do a flat roll. See what Fair happens. Enough. Yeah, like. The thing is, is like, technically speaking, yes, because Nobi's been solely focused on this. This is, however, also the, like, the thing that Colton's been doing for all of his life, mm -hmm. uh, almost. So, I did say it comes see. about even. This could be very embarrassing. <laughs> okay, roll after three. Okay. Okay, three, two, one. Oh, I had to put the fire in. Ooh, Holy yes. shit. <laughs> Crushed it. That double crit. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> Like, Col Colton, you do well and you do regimented. But know me, like, You've, you've been drilling this for an yeah, entire you've, week. You've been drilling it, and you've been like, not cutting corners, but essentially, um, every time you do it, you, um, you like refine how you do it to be more fluid and to be more smooth. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the problem, the problem for you, Colton, is it's regimented, mm. so it's following the exact steps the same way. You don't improve. You don't get quicker. Um, so, like, I, I don't know how Nomi would... Is it, for Colton, this is probably, like, a decent time. It's not going to be his best time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking at the roll. Yeah, no, it's, it's still I think good. it'll probably throw I... him to hear the gun go down on the floor mm. to show that she's finished before he's finished. You hear the beep of the, the, the timer, the start. Uh -huh. And then I, I click mine when I'm done. Wow. That's incredible. Blindfold off. Oh, yeah. No, Mimi's still got her blindfold on because she's proving a point. Okay. <laughs> I think Colton just accepts that you did it with a blindfold on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It makes sense with your interactions with Nomi so far. Mm. Um, and if you will continue, she will be back one second. Uh, and Colton doesn't even check the gun because there's no way you wouldn't have done it correctly as as far as he's concerned. Mm. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you. You can see her blush and she'll take the, <laughs> the blind off, blindfold off a little bit. I look I at the time very... on your stopwatch. Mm. Uh, uh, 
that beats my all-time record. She gets like this, like her cheek muscles are like, don't smile, don't smile, don't smile. But you can just see her eyes getting smaller and smaller. Are you okay? You're squinting. Yes. Mm. Still concentrating. What was the bed for? Mm -hmm. I can't remember what we made the bed for. Oh, it wasn't for anything. It was just, I'm going to get better. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, I think I think she said something like, "Oh, maybe you should practice." And he he pulled a Johnny Big Bollocks move and was like, "I can do this blindfolded." And she <laughs> said, "Give me a week." So it's been a week. So I guess I need to practice more. Perhaps, or perhaps that is perfectly acceptable. Oh, yeah, but it's not the best. No. Does it need to be? Yeah. It needs to be my best. Then practice. I think Colton smiles a little bit. Little little like little smile. Not not the fake smile he was doing mm -hmm. to the people when they came in. I think there's a little bit of a grin there. What next? Oh. <laughs> um. <laughs> Colin just pulls out an MG42 and slams it on the table as we <laughs> fade to black. <laughs> <laughs> so. A little time later. I assume. Uh, Nomi, you head into the garden. Because mm -hmm. I'm assuming at some point you're going to the garden. I'm going to do my job. Cool. Yeah, it, it's... It's uh, something you've been doing as a matter of course as opposed to kind of more consciously. And when you go in, it's with more focus than you've had over the past, like, week or so. Just purely because you've been focused on the, um... Well, I mean, amazing job of gun maintenance, pulling it apart, putting it back together again. There's something... Something kind of fun about, you know, like, being able to completely understand something where you like take it all apart and then you can put it back together and mm -hmm. however when you get in the garden you notice something that has been out of the periphery of your senses essentially uh, the tangerine tree is wilted and its leaves are brown. It's thin and spindly. Immediate di diagnosis? Close to dead or dead. Her eyes will go wide and she'll instantly run over to it, pick it up and haul it into um, wherever the showers are for them. Yeah. And just run the water and let it soak through from the roots so it can take as much as possible. But she's like, it, I think if anybody saw it, it would be the closest to panicking that they would have seen. Yeah. And um, as she does... I would say in the back of her head, she's probably trying to ignore the fact that it's too far gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah, no. Yeah, the, the, she's just like fully clothed on her knees in the shower. Yeah. 
just getting soaked trying to get some water into this thing and sort of digging her nails down into the soil to try mm. and free it up and get something in there like that's uh, all she can focus on the roots are loose and brittle the trunk slash stem of it is essentially it's not completely gone but there's no coming back from it It'll almost be that that sort of uh, somebody using what what are those pads called? Uh, different relators. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, like one of those scenes where they go just one more, just one more, and she, yeah. she thinks she can do something because it doesn't make sense that she wouldn't be able to figure it out, and I think she just hits that wall of realization that she's actually making it worse. Mm. And she just like freezes and you can see her, her fists just like clenched by her sides. And this tension in her face, like she's, she's trying not to cry, not that she would know how to how to stop that or start that it's mm. not a, a sensation she's familiar with and i think she just freezes it's like like turning an appliance off at the outlet she just stares at that thing for like an hour while the water keeps running into it uh -huh. Just these big choking sob breaths that don't quite make it as far as her eyes, just unable to process what's going on. I will suggest a thought that will probably occur to her at some point, which is the essentially she was so hyper focused on one task that she neglected other jobs, mm. aspects around. Yeah, and all that is racing through her head, like Astrid taking her out to a gun range, playing with the, um, the laser tag thing, like all this stuff that isn't her job and how the fuck people find that balance. It it doesn't make sense. And she can only see it as this kind of binary decision. Like you, if you can't guarantee you're going to be able to do what you need to do. You, you either have a, a life outside of what you are or you don't. And if there's a risk of like letting these, <laughs> letting everybody here go hungry, by her having fun, then she's just not going to do that anymore. You can see her kind of... Her eyes harden a bit. I'm... I'm going to give you... three scenes as a flash in, Nomi, in Nomi's head. The first... is the knife being thrown in the alleyway that enters that guy's throat and kills him. Mm -hmm. The second is a dark room lit with candles. A very grateful and tearful man on his knees in front of Nomi as she holds a gun to his head. The third is an alleyway, some urban place. As Nomi walks away from a man, tears streaming down his face and screaming into the night. And I think we'll uh, fade out there. 
Sorry. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to be doing? Oh, looks like we got another leak. Now just go double check the buckets and stuff. Okay. <laughs> So, hmm. doesn't really fit. <laughs> Better. Uh, Astrid. There is a point where your door slides open and a man in a suit um, like quite tight form fitting with a big collar and a, a green uh, ring around the front of his face wanders in, stops. Is this and, the like, VIP? Looks, yeah, and like looks around. Can I help you. Oh, um, I'm sorry. I I thought this was the captain's quarters. I understand why you got mistaken, but, um, no, not here. Sorry, I don't really know the ship very well, um... I can take you to him if you like, or I can radio him, you can come here, or... Uh, that would be... Either one would be, um, wonderful, yes, thank you. Um, where, where am I right now? The engine room. Engine room. Right, thank you. Uh, sorry, what's your name? Give me a second. I have too many notes. Uh, m my name is uh, Colin. Colin Newman. I I'm uh, uh, a part of the uh, the the inner ring of produce, uh, governmental official. Okay. Just one second. Uh, Captain. Yeah. Uh, I have the VIP, the engine room, call, call, call and knew it. He said he was looking for you. You're not... You're not holding him for ransom, are you? Am I meant to be? No. Okay. But you said you, had, you said you have him like it was a threat. I mean, he came here voluntarily. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um... All right, uh, do you want me to come down and collect him? I mean, yeah. Okay. What, what am I supposed to do? No, no, nothing. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll come get him. I'll be right down. Definitely not hold him for ransom. Please don't. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it, it'll, Captain's coming down to be here in a minute. Oh, okay. Um, jolly good. It's like a... Slight pause. A little, bit, a little bit awkward. Engine room. Yes, engine room. So Astrid. this. Astrid. It's nice to. Sorry, my manners. Um, uh, I, uh, there's not much point in asking your name now, but it's nice to meet you, Astrid. Um, I do apologise for being rude. I'm a little bit out of my element. I don't travel much. So, this is where the engines power push the ship? I mean, I hope so. But, yeah. Good. This is where the engines work. I, I really don't know much about ships. Um, what do you know much about, then? Oh, uh, uh, crops. Um, if, if we're going machines, you know, uh, harvesters, um, sowers, uh, thing, thing, things like that. Um, you should speak with Nomi. He runs our garden on board. She's quite difficult to approach. I know she's not. You just walk up to her and talk. Uh-huh. 
I mean, you did it, yeah, didn't you? I'm sorry, I, what did I do? You came up to me and you spoke to me. Accidentally. But you still did it. Yes. I'm really not sure how it's going, though. I mean, do you usually write all your conversations? No? Hmm. And the, the captain walks in. Astrid! Captain. Uh, Mr. Newman. Thank, thank you, Astrid. It's, uh, yes. Um, you wanted to speak to me? Yes, yes, uh, just a, a couple of concerns, uh, nothing too large. All right, well, uh, if you come with me, we'll go to my quarters and we can discuss it. Very well. Uh, it was a, 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 a genuine pleasure to meet you, uh, Astrid. Hey, you too. And as uh, the VAP turn around, I'm just going to look to the captain and go like, Come, come on, come on, um... Call him counsellor. Come on, counsellor, let's, uh, let's do, do be going. And, like, as as the door closes, he's like... <laughs> oh, dear. Poor bastard didn't know what he was walking into. Um... <laughs> Okay. So, who's ah right, right. Um. So yeah, if if anyone again has uh, things, they my guess would be uh that Nomi especially is probably keeping to herself for the moment. Yeah, yeah. she's. Soggily in the garden, burying the remnants of a tree in in a, a compost bin. Okay. I think Kareen would actually come down to the garden, like once she was sure that everything was good at the bridge, yeah. um, and of course was corrected and everything. She'd just come down to the garden to like chill for a little bit, um, up oh. or come up, sorry, um, and would probably notice that Nomi doesn't seem entire or maybe seems more like herself just like very something's off <laughs> yeah. um i i would say from your interactions with her she always seemed like she was trying you know like um she always seemed a little bit off comparatively uh, a little bit strange maybe but at the current state in time and please Nomi correct me if i'm wrong here I feel like she'd be a bit more shut down. She's literally just focusing on yeah. her job. Yeah. She's just breaking branches off this tree, what's left of this tree, and sticking it in. To in, the... in fact, very possible, very possibly, does she even notice Kareen come no. in? Yeah. No. I think Kareen would probably see this. I don't know if she'd realize that it was a tree that died or if she would just, I think she'd just sit and help her. I, I would say, given that Kareen and Nomi have had a reasonable number of interactions where they've essentially come in here and hung out, you'd notice that the, the tangerine tree used to be there, hale and healthy, and is now being essentially you know, mulched. Yeah. Um, Whether she wants to say something about that is a whole other story. I don't, I think Kareen would know, know me well enough to be like, I'm just, she probably doesn't want to talk about it, but mm -hmm. maybe I could just give her a hand and, so that she doesn't feel like she's alone here. Um, for the, like a no pressure hand. <laughs> I was going to say, for the, for the narrative of it, considering when, Nomi got Kareen in there. She essentially got Kareen in there, got her busy doing work, and eventually yeah. Kareen talked about her own shit that she wanted to. Yeah. So it, it would make sense that Kareen's like, I don't know how to deal with this exactly, so I'll just do the same thing Nomi did with me and just, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so 
so yeah she would she would just like help her like whatever she was doing she she'd start doing it with her or like handing her things or whatever just like quietly kind of be there and yep. offer a hand and if nomi never says anything that's fine like green's totally okay with that yeah, yeah. it would be a, a silent activity yeah. So, yes, um, Nomi, you do notice, after a little bit of time, that, uh, Karina's there and she's essentially helping out. It's reasonably apparent she's not 100% sure what's being done, so a lot of what she does is essentially the obvious, you know, like, she sees you... Uh, like, like snapping off branches and kind of laying them down and, you know, to be ordered. It does a similar type of thing. If she's doing that task, then um, Nomi will just pick up a handful of these pre-broken bits and shift them over to the compost bin and start troweling them in to yeah. sort of disperse them throughout. Because essentially that job's now been delegated, so that's great. Okay. I, I will say the m the majority of the plants were not critical, but they were a little bit... Um, uh, mm. under t t tended to. They weren't, mm -hmm. they weren't tended to great. But you, you know, once you realised and had the things... Um, you're able to bring them all back up to healthy and, and they're all back on track now, so. No, no need to... She'll, she'll be kind of a little bit paranoid, though, at this yes. point, so she'll be checking... Oh, sorry. Wow. Don't hit the microphone. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, she'll be, like, checking the pH, checking the moisture levels repeatedly. And just absolute silence. It's not aggressive, it's just like she's not home. Yeah. Yeah. Kareen would be totally fine with this. Like she understands sometimes you just want quiet and so she's just she like never wants to do work, but in this space, especially if Nomi is doing work, she's just she's just gonna naturally help out, even though she doesn't know what she's doing. So she'll like do everything with whatever job Nomi was doing. And if that gets done, then she'll pick up the next job that Nomi was doing. And if Nomi moves on to something else, then she'll finish that. <laughs> yeah, Just... I think they're probably gonna bunny hop yeah. <laughs> down a few different jobs, like arranging things and cleaning out pots and stacking things. And... Yeah. At some point, Kareen might like briefly go back to the break room and make them both some coffee and bring it upstairs and- Just Nitro kind of or? Yeah, why not? <laughs> I'm just saying, because, you know, you don't have an infinite supply, and that shit's expensive, so... That's true. Okay, fine. Just normal coffee. Regular <laughs> coffee. Regular coffee. I see how it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> you know, you know for a fact that if you were broken down in tears, Kareen would 100% get you the nitro. Mm -hmm. but, uh... Yes. <laughs> well, yeah, she's she might break out the nitro if things really seem bad <laughs> see how they progress that's fair yeah. um uh, the only note i'll add um is nomi you have over the past day two days or so you've you've managed to to some degree uh kind of get through the shock and the kind of confusion the only thing that's still recurring is that scene in the alleyway in the rain. That's one that you can't shake out of your brain. Like, it pops up randomly. Mm -hmm. It's what it is. Mm. So. Seeing as we are currently uh, sorting a dead tangerine tree and not really talking... I assume we're not going to, uh... We're not looking to talk right now, yes? She's okay. just, she just wants to <clears throat> be there if Nomi feels like talking. Mm -hmm. It's it's literally like companionable silence, you yes. know? Sometimes just having a person there 
and letting you be yourself is like you know especially mm -hmm. if you're mulling over something or, or whatever like oh yeah yeah no. oh and so you work in silence time passes at some point Kareen, you probably get up and you know carry on yeah. should we say uh, and you know feel free to say yes or no uh, for the next couple of days, this is a bit of a, like, habit. Uh, 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 you know, Kareen comes in for a couple of hours, just helps yeah. out and... Yeah, just, just for a little while, like... When she has free time from piloting, mm -hmm. etc. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just for a little bit. And she always brings coffee. And if it's been, like, two or three days and uh, Nomi hasn't said anything, she'd probably break out the nitro on that okay. third day. <laughs> just in case. God. Whenever you come in as well, there'd be the, like the weirdest fucking jobs that make no sense. Yeah. Like one day you'll come in and she's just cutting pieces of string to a certain length. And that's it. No explanation. Yeah. I mean, it's all kind of a mystery to Kareen anyway, because she has no idea what to do in a garden. So, so it all seems strange. <laughs> so it all seems appropriate. I had a, I had a thought. Nomi, would you like to cut up the like the smaller branches of the um, tangerine tree and use them as as uh, struts for the plants that when they're growing? That you can essentially like, you know, some plants you like tie them to sticks. Mm -hmm. to... Um, I, <laughs> much as I love the poetry of that, that Nomi would see that as an basically for a plant an edible resource yeah. where she could use plastic or metal mm. as a that, stand that makes, and put that back that into the soil. That makes a lot of sense, yeah. Right? Yeah, they're totally getting mulched. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, in that case, these things happen. Time moves on. Uh, the next thing will be Colton. Mm. Uh, Brista comes to talk with you. Which one's Br uh, Brista? Uh, Brista Culver is the great grandfather of the two uh, young kids. Okay. Um, the locker rooms aren't off limits so he uh, either when you're in the the break room or the locker rooms he'd probably come and uh, i'm just not sure how often uh colton's in the in the break room um i mean he doesn't like hang out in the locker room he goes there get stuff and yeah was that in in the generator room where Ooh. his workshop basically is um I, I think what would probably happen is he'd uh, uh a brister would essentially waylay you on the way to you know one of your kind of like checkups and and going around making sure that the pipes are working and he says uh i i hope you um wouldn't mind but i i would it be okay if i came with you on your maybe helped out a bit a little bit like assistant uh while you're uh, keeping the ship shape uh, I guess. Thank you. And uh, do, would you like me to carry anything, or um, I'll put these on. I give him some like gloves, mm. rubber gloves or something. Oh, okay. And uh, hold this bucket, and then I'll start walking where I'm going. Quite bored, bored on the ship. Not what I should do. Uh, it's nice to be um, helpful and mm. idle hands. Yeah, yeah. Good to have a hobby. Not m much in the ways of, of hobbies on a ship. Uh, it's fine for you as as crew, but. Can't help feeling a little bit useless here. Oh, 
are you the kind of person that needs something to do to feel like you're useful? I understand. Can I lead him upstairs? So, um, what do you do? Well, I, I'm, I'm retired now. Mm. Um, I, I used to, uh, sorry, one moment. I'm like, I know what he did. I don't know who he did it for. Where is it? Ah, yes. I, uh, I, I used to manage, uh, a couple of properties for, uh, Sikris Holdings. I like a landlord. Um, essentially, yes, but they, they were, um, industrial properties. Uh, so, factories, um... Production, mainly. One power plant. Mm. Now open the door. Okay, hold that bucket up. Oh, like this? Yep, yep. Maybe okay. hold it away from you. Uh, away, okay. And I, I reach my hand down to something. I pull up this congealed toilet roll from the toilet and I slap it in the bucket. Oh! Yeah, that's why you need gloves. I thought it was... So you don't get... Electrocuted. Oh, right. No, you don't. You don't be working all electrics with... Wet hands. Of course. I kind of do all the other jobs around here, too. The little ones. Oh, uh, <laughs> what's your, your job on the ship? Um... You know when something goes wrong? Yes. Yeah, that's my job. Oh. Okay, pass me the bucket. Yes, yes. No, I'll, um... I'll, I'll go... Uh, I'll, I'll walk to the... Um, the garden. Yeah. Got more waste for you, Nomi. In the corner. I don't think she'll even meet his eyes. Mm. She'll just point to a corner and carry on doing what she's doing. I wonder if I can tell. I don't think I can tell the difference between you normally not paying Roll awareness! <laughs> <laughs> and it's, uh, you know what? You know, I'll do it because I'm not very good at yep, that kind that of stuff. Sense. What would I be rolling, Sheepy? Ooh, uh, let's have a look here. <laughs> Probably jack of all trades. <laughs> Social. Mm. Social. I would. Or just hit social. I would say social. Yeah. Oh. Eight. How is it that that is the f lowest number you'll have rolled today? <laughs> you got a crit with that. <laughs> Guys, don't talk to me. <laughs> Green wouldn't be there right now, by the way. She'd be at the bridge. Yeah. On an eight, I'm gonna leave that up to you a little bit. What I will say is, unless Colton is trying to notice or taking an interest, probably not. Um, I mean, he does <laughs> generally take an interest in Nomi, but not yeah, like not that way. Not really like that. No, I, I'll, I'll say. The best way I can... Maybe, maybe I'm like, mm, she's not 100%, but... I would say different from normal, uh, not necessarily bad in his... You know, it's just like, mm. there's something a bit off. Yeah. It's a mental note for later, I think. Yeah. And I empty the bucket into the corner she always tells me to put the shit into. Yeah. And uh, the... the um, uh, Brister's like, you know, blah, blah. Mm. Empties out. Okay, you need to wash those hands. Y yes, yes. Um, <clears throat> is there is there not not more uh, uh, things to collect? It is uh, twenty one thirty two. 
I gotta go check on the drip buckets. Uh, can I help? Sure. I'm just gonna go take a look. You know anything about plumbing? We leave the garden. No, uh... There, there were people who sorted the plumbing in, in the buildings. I've never had to... Plumb. <laughs> Is that the word, word to plumb? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> Um, so, um, just as an aside, at this point, you will have had a minimal interaction with pretty much everyone and have been introduced to them. So, when he says, so Colton, or Mr. Nguyen, he'd probably say Mr. Nguyen. Um, <clears throat> essentially, you'll know the names, depending on your characters and how much interest you take, you'll know the names of all of the passengers if you want to, and they'll most likely know yours. Uh, so, Mr. Nguyen, um, well, what did you do before you worked, uh, on, uh, what's, what's, what's the name of the ship? Just have to double check. Oh, it's the Deep Waters. D deep Waters, of course. Um, Merchant Navy trading. D dangerous? Uh, job was it? No, not really. I don't believe you were here, Rowdy. Sure, when I and they back down. Oh, of, of course. I I was just wondering because your uh, arm and um, uh, industrial happens. Industrial accidents happen. On I I know. It's uh, wondering if that's where you lost. I think he ponders his arm for a bit. Yeah. And just sort of... I don't think he thinks back to him losing it. I think he thinks back to him... Before. Like, starting to... you know, like, getting used to having this prosthetic. I think that's what goes through his head. So I don't, I don't think... I don't think he allows his brain to go back to that place unless it's specifically brought up and he can't help it. Yeah. Try and, you know, avoid his traumas and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know how hard it is to smoke with a fake arm when you've just gone there? Actually, no. Hard. Nearly quit smoking there for a bit. Until it'll kill me. <laughs> well, um, I, 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 I do know that uh, depending on the the brand, um, they they aren't all uh, particularly harmful. If he knows brands, this is quite clearly a military spec. Oh yeah, yeah. prosthetic arm. This is like the height of technology back then for military spec, like compared to maybe consumer brands, probably look a bit nicer. Um, but this one is designed to function in a battle yeah. and be able to be like, it's probably connected directly to um, uh, signal sent in his brain so he can move his arm as if it was still an original arm, but it's, you know, it's still hard to get used to. Yeah. But I don't know if he knows. Knows that or not. From talking with him, um, and the fact that he kind of like, he didn't, you know, he doesn't inspect the arm. Yeah, he has a little, uh, you know, look at it for the sake of things, but you see no, like, flash of inspiration or, or anything along those lines. It's essentially like, oh, an arm. Very nice. And I do... Do I mention the... I don't mention the eye at all. Like, I mostly bring it towards the arm. But I definitely don't mention the eye when he brings it up. Yeah. Okay, do you, have you got thick soles on those shoes? Uh, yes. Okay. There's some uh, issues with some wiring in the coffee room. <laughs> All right. Well, um, uh, I'll 
follow your lead. Uh, you know what you're doing. I think I just... I, d- I don't, like... He's not going to be helpful in me doing my job. But I don't think Colton is that cold that he would just make him stand there and do stuff. So he'd probably, like, hold this and do that. Yep. Pass me the spanner. Uh, that that's, that's this one, right? And like... uh, yeah. yeah. And I just grab it myself. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. And the next time, it'll never come up again. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as you're working, like... I, I, I feel like Colton would have an inkling that he's hasn't really touched on what he wants to talk about. Okay. Um, you won. It, it down, down to you, really, how much Colton picks up. It, it seems it seems to be essentially, like... It, it, is it quite blatant that he's <sighs> just, like, seems to be starting a sentence, but not really? A, a really good way f- to describe it for Colton to kind of, like, translate is... It's like before a big battle, all the rookies are chatting randomly about anything just so that they're not focusing on the thing at hand. Mm. What was his name again? Uh, it was... Brister. Um, Mr. Brister. Yes. Something on your mind. I... uh, I just heard that you had... uh, served some time... in the... uh, in the military. Yeah, well, I'm from New Elfin. I'm, um, my, myself and, and my family are originally from Bayonis. Just gonna check them out. Oh, that's next over from where we're headed, right? Yeah. Oh. You remember why Rock? Yes. My, uh... My, my, uh, uh... Grandson and and granddaughter. Uh, they, um... They served, uh, White Rock. Mm. They must have been brave. They, uh, uh, moved from... Uh, Bayonis to, uh... Sycharis. It's the the home world, uh, the original planet, uh, inner inner government. Essentially, what that means to Colton is that technically they started off under the initiative government and moved and essentially like the equivalent of like repatriate repatriate repatriation. So I mean, you know, yeah, expats. <laughs> oh. I mean, it was pretty hard. It's not always to, not always easy to live the decisions you make sometimes, especially if you're not even making them yourself. Yes. I, I, I guess, um, I I was just curious what it was like. Um, or well, uh, I'm not wanting to to pry, of course, but um, does it look like he wants to know what it's like, or is he just looking to be? Does he want to be soothed, <laughs> or is does he look like he's looking for answers? I, I would say more along the lines of looking for answers. Uh, so, okay. again, a little bit more information. 
because uh, he is from Bayonis, and his grandkids essentially moved to inner territory either just before or during the outbreak of war between the initiative and the inner government the likelihood is is he didn't hear from them at all until word of their death came to him And he's kind of like, he's kind of like, like wringing his, wringing his hands, not really paying much attention to the job now. Or like the work you're doing. When you've been on a planet, it's literally been destroyed. I don't mean exploded, blown up in the people. Destroyed. Wherever you look, hope hasn't been crushed or muted. It's as if it never even existed in the first place. The only thing you can do is what you've been told to do, to put there, because you can't make peace can never make peace with something on that scale you can only make peace with knowing you did everything you could do at the time Was it... Was it worth it? For the the price you paid? I don't know the answer to that. Yes. No. Nothing worse comes into it. You can only process it. You can't give yourself a straight answer. It's too unimaginable. There's so much pain after the fact. But if it didn't happen, but this will be pain. A few that fight. But genuinely what they believe in. I think it was worth. I don't know what it would be like without it. And he kind of... Standing there, kind of absorbing what you're saying. When you finish, there's like silence, and you're both kind of standing there for a moment. And he like clenches, unclenches his his fingers, and then just steps forward and throws his arms around you, just like bear hug, you know, like awkward, weird. Spontaneous. And you could hear like a little bit of sniffing. Just, you know, suppressed emotion. The, um... I don't I don't think Cotton shies away from it, but he's he's certainly not gonna lock in an he's not, Yeah, he's not leading into not it or really anything. His. And that's not the vibe of it either. It's yeah. not like, hey, give he me a needs... hug and comfort me. It's like thank I've you. I've lost control and yeah. I just here is me showing my emotion. And it, it's reasonably quick anyway. It's literally just like a bear hug, a few, couple of seconds, and then kind of like a, a release and step back and kind of look a bit awkward. 
Thank you. I don't, I don't think Holton looks like embarrassed. Yeah. It was definitely awkward, but I don't think he looks. Oh no no um um the um. Brista looks a little bit awkward and embarrassed, you know, the, like, outpouring of emotion like that. Hmm. Yeah. We're, um... We're, I think I told you this, but we're going to visit their graves. If you don't need me uh, anymore, I'm gonna go um, check on the kids. Make, make sure they're they're okay. Yeah, as you are. And he like kind of a bit hesitantly turns and then just moves off. Walks back, gives me the bucket, and then goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Colton was probably processing that for a while because he saw a lot of people die. A lot of people under his command, probably the same age as the way he's talking. And at the time, the only way you can process it is these, these are, when they, when they die, they're numbers. Because if you try and quantify this as a person dying, you can't function. Yeah. So but the also... only time he's ever done that is after the fact. Mm. So I think in a strange way, he mourns this old man's... Um, is it son and daughter or grand, grandson and granddaughter? Uh, grandson, granddaughter. The, um, the two kids with him are great-grandson, great-granddaughter. Right. I, uh, I think he... Um, like he doesn't he didn't get a chance to mourn people who he knew um but to him it's the same so i think for a moment he does does mourn this guy's grandkids he's probably been to visit a couple of graves mm, absolutely he knows what it's like to lose someone even if he didn't know these people he knew people like <sighs> correct me if i'm wrong here I kind of feel that he wouldn't have been back to places like Fitful Falls or the Bro Broken Plains or White Rock. Uh, he's definitely not been back to White Rock. Yeah. <laughs> but what are the other twos? Because there's one that he's probably been back to. Broken Plains was the terrible assault. And what was the other one? Uh, the other one was Fitful Falls. He's probably been back to Fitful Falls, actually. Uh, uh, that, that's the one that's on uh, New Orphan. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah He's definitely been back there. Okay. I don't, I, <laughs> Colin that... isn't really, like, he doesn't dwell on stuff, but no. when it's brought up, like, he has to confront it. Plus, Fitful Falls was early in his career. Mm. And he probably, that was probably the time he was closest with any of the troops, because a lot of them will have been from the orphan too. Mm. Um, so, makes sense. Like, there's there's probably a uh, there's probably like a military graveyard nearby, uh, like a memorial and stuff like that. Okay. And um, I think after that, he would, I'm not sure if we saw it on the name, but he'd send a message to a woman to make sure mom and dad are okay. Okay. And then just carry on about his shit. Yeah. All right. Well... Remember laser tag? So, we are 
heading off further through time and through space. Same thing. Sorry. Colton, uh, the pipes are mostly maintained. Shit is still need emptying, but that's slightly different. She might be annoying, but she knows how to fucking weld. Yeah, it's true. And, um, Kareen, you seem on course. Things are going pretty well. Uh, you get a reply from the message you sent out. Uh, I'm assuming you just want to pass it on over. Yeah, yeah. Um, I probably just message him. Um, actually, I don't know. Does he have? Yeah, I would just message him. You, you can, just... you can, you can basically loudspeaker it into the cargo hold, but there's no like personal message. Okay. Um. Remind me of his name. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, no problem. There's a lot of names. Yeah. It's my fault. Uh, it's Joni Gar Garcon. Uh, Joni, there's a message for you. Uh, just whenever you're ready, you can either listen to it via the AI or come to the bridge. Maybe like five minutes later, there's a... Hello? Hello? <laughs> You said there was a message for me. I am here to pick up the um, the message. Okay. Um. I think I would. Do we have like little recordings or, the, or something that I could give him? Like... You, you you've actually um. This is probably the moment you remember. You still have the the jack. Right. And you're like, oh yeah, I I can just put it on this jack. Yeah. So I do that. I grab it, throw the message on that. And give it to him. Here you go. I meant to give this back to you, but it's convenient that I have it now. I don't <laughs> trust the cat. It, it's an AI. It's not actually a cat. It's just an avatar. It looks and acts like a cat. Really? I heard it I say guess. meow. Right, but it's so weird. Doesn't it seem weird to you? I don't know if you've ever interacted with an actual cat before. It just seems weird. But it it's just an avatar, right? So it you know, it's trustworthy insofar as the ship's AI is trustworthy. But yeah, it's fine. I understood about thirty percent of what you just said. That's okay. Message? Yep, there you go. Good. Thank you. And turns and walks. She kinda like shakes her head at him like I really want to know what was in that message, but meh. there's no reason for concern until there's a reason for concern, right? So, I don't right. Know. And Tess is like, "Well, I'm gonna know after the after the episode, so it's fine." <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> um, additionally, with that message, um is uh pretty much uh um a notification of um pretty much a cordon to the area where you are headed essentially um the drop-off point is uh close by to an uh kind of like urban district of the planet um the place you're landing is a government facility. The plan is is to drop off uh, the VIP at the government facility. Uh, it's got a big landing pad there. Take off and then head over to the nearest urban area. Unfortunately, nearest urban area, which is where a couple of the families are intending to go, is currently cornered off by the military. And no one's allowed in for now. No reason given. But that came in um, around about the same time. How far away are we? Uh, you've probably got about half a week. Three, four days. Mm -hmm. I think I'd let the captain know. Uh... Uh, captain? Uh, yes. Would you come up here when you get a chance? There's just some news that you might want to know. 
Sure, um, I'll be right down. Maybe like 10 minutes pass and the, the captain uh, wanders in. Doesn't knock, thankfully. Um, no need for him. Um, yeah, as soon as he walks in, um, I think I would be like, uh, hey, captain, so, uh, w you know, one of the passengers received this message back, but along with the message, there was an update that the area where we're supposed to be dropping a bunch of these passengers is currently cordoned off. We're still about half a week out, but they didn't give a reason or an end date or anything. So do we have a plan if we, we can't drop them where they want to be dropped? Um, well, hopefully it's just, a, a, you know, a crackdown, you know. Sometimes places get a little bit rowdy. There's a riot. Well, whatever. Um, so by the time we get there, it'll probably be cleared up. If not... We'll figure it out uh, when we get there, I guess. Worst well, comes okay. to worst, they sleep on the ship an extra day or maybe two. I I just want to give you a heads up. No, thank you. Uh, it's it's worth knowing. Uh, we can prepare. Uh, ship, all good. Are the the sensors, the new sensors we put in, are they? Okay. Yeah, yeah, um, sensors are good. Uh, the maps that we had are actually a little bit out of date, but I noticed that, so I corrected for it, so we're still on schedule. Um, Sh should yeah, we Should we get some updates? That'd be great. <laughs> that would definitely be great for, you know, future trips. For this trip, we're good, but after this... Yeah. Okay. I'll put it in the list of things that need to be upgraded to the ship. Um... <laughs> I know Colton wants a gun, like a proper cannon on the ship. Yeah, I mean, as long as he knows how to use it, <laughs> uh, oh, could be handy. That that's an interesting question. Um, how's your shooting? Uh, have you been in much uh, ship to ship engagements? Not a whole lot. I I do have some some limited training because pilot, but not. You know, my my experience is all in yeah, you were scouting, scouting and exploration, yeah. so, yeah. Um, in that case, maybe turrets as opposed to ship, D yeah. like, directly controlled by you? Might... Okay, sure. I, I would hope that we never need to use them, but as a last resort or maybe just to look threatening and therefore less assailable that's always good i i i doubt you had much uh i doubt you had, you saw even any ships at all out near zenith so not many no yeah. all right well um i'll go have a chat with colton see if he would be okay with turrets as opposed to um big Ship. Guns. Yeah. And uh, um, just keep an eye on the on the cordon situation. Let me know if I it will. develops any yeah. further. If there's a change, I'll update you. All right. Thank you. I think she'd like request, like sign up for the bulletin or mm. whatever, just to continue to get mm. updates. Would you, would you like to subscribe to this new newsletter? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just for now. <laughs> All right. Mental note to unsubscribe as soon as they leave. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think we'll enter. Interesting, uh, interesting session, guys. Beat the crap out of some kids right off the gate. <laughs> he did. Hell yeah. Let's Fucked do that up. every episode. <laughs> that was really fun to watch. We were like, oh, we won't tell chat. And they'll be like, what's going on? And immediately in chat was like, oh, they're joining the laser tag. <laughs> 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 chat. Try and do something nice. <laughs> it was nice. Very nice. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll, we'll do a quick, we'll do a quick roundy roo. Um, and then head off for the night. Um, 
open floor. Anyone have any thoughts? Uh, myself personally, I have no me thoughts. I, I really enjoyed the tangerine tree. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting it to see Nomi fail. I, yeah. I don't mean enjoy as in, like, I enjoyed yeah, the suffering, yeah. I enjoyed the scene. Um, yeah, yeah that was that was interesting. I just feel Having like those. it's... Oh, go ahead, sorry. No, 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 go for it. <laughs> um, it, I, it just makes me worry because she's been, like, opening up and, like, doing all these things, yeah. and now she's, it's, like, two steps forward, like, 30 steps back, maybe, mm -hmm. and that's not good. <laughs> I mean, your garden's Maybe. gonna be super efficient now. Maybe it's two steps forward and only one step back. Hopefully. I, uh... I know there's probably gonna be a few people in chat who are desperately clinging to those flashes that we saw. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're already suspicious of Novi yeah. and, and her past, so... It's because yeah. she was genetically designed in a lab to be the, the, the perfect killing machine. Okay, how do you explain those scenes? What, the scene where she had a gun to someone's head? Yeah. Because <laughs> she's That's very what she was good. Trained for. She's perfect she's perfectly bioengineered to kill. He was he wanted her to kill. That's how good she is. <laughs> kill and she me, murdered mommy. the shit out of that tree, am I right? I by the by the oh, way. Oh, too soon. Too soon. By the way, fairly cold. I saw Gucci. that. I saw that comment in the Zoom chat when she when she had her knee on uh, on that poor young man's throat. Oh, that poor lad! I didn't know that was him. Yeah. This is super awkward well, now. Not combo. that she's aware of that at all. The the comment but he the, is the comment was like so. was like choke me, mummy, or something like that. <laughs> oh it was... no, it was <laughs> mummy. <laughs> oh, yeah. There we go. I saw that pop up and I was like, oh God. And then I, I was projecting. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it was super awkward. I had to make awkward teenage boy more awkward. <laughs> Kick him in the face and hog tie him. I mean, you know, it, it's, yeah. Oh, he's not I, even in his teens, is he? I thought he was 23. Yeah, early oh, yeah. 20s. Mate, he's younger than Astrid. Just. Well, well, actually, he's old as balls. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> I believe the I, actual phrase is old as tits, but you know, keep on getting it wrong. True. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Tits I, are just I, the balls I, of the chest. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I, I enjoyed um, the difference between like Cotton was playing and like did the, the like, oh, I'm dying. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then when it was time to eat, he's like, okay, let me sort this out. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> I was getting so many spaced flashbacks from him mm. at certain <laughs> That's points. exactly where it came from, because it's so correct. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There were a lot of very illuminating roles tonight. Yeah. You, you mean how everyone is really good at the things that they've rolled to, well, just <laughs> rolled really well, even? Mm-hmm. There, there wasn't one, there was one below nine. And like three below ten, everything was green. It's all green. I am so happy having been denied that boon that I kicked its fucking ass. That is literally the best I could have possibly rolled. It's better than Cotton could have ever possibly rolled. <laughs> That's why I said what I said because he could not have beaten that. I. So that was definitely better than his best. Oh yeah. I. I the dice were on our side. I did enjoy um, Astrid's thug life duel with a teenage girl. Toying <laughs> <laughs> with her Wait, food. You said, you said that she was one of the old ones. You said she wasn't one of the kids. 19. Yeah. Yeah, but she's not a combat. <laughs> well, she shouldn't have agreed then. She had a gun. She chose to put it down and now she's learned a valuable lesson. All right, lesson. Mrs. Hogtie. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what? Did it or did it not stop him from going back to the dead area where he could potentially have been revived? <laughs> or drunk squash, yeah. yeah. Or nurse, or put a, oh, put a cushion over his bone. <laughs> that was that was so funny. That was so funny when I realised that Astrid and Safi had forgotten about her in the engine room, and I was oh, like, God. I was like, where's my sister? And I just saw I saw Safi going. <laughs> like shit. I had genuinely forgotten. I was like, 
<laughs> she have just said nothing and waited until the Two next days time later, she went into she the went engine to room and she's just there in a oh puddle God. of pee. Like, ah! <laughs> Accidentally killed one of the passengers. I mean, that's one out of a lot. So that's you would have been left there an hour tops. She has to go into this. Fine. I, I, I did also love Corrine being freed reluctantly, being pushed out into the cargo and immediately being killed again and being like, all right, well, back I go. She actually oh, felt no. really good about finding where they were shooting her from yeah. because that was helpful. Right. It's an interesting way to find out that information by literally getting killed. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it's very effective for her purposes. It was very effective. It so was. if anybody dies, just die pointing at the thing that killed you. <laughs> I felt so bad not responding to her trying to mm. help in the garden. That was that was rough. I kind of figured she wouldn't, at least this episode. Mm. I feel like it's going to take her time. Yeah, you know, and plants like being alive. <laughs> yeah, I also so kind of got the vibe that that, that did came... help. Wait, because mm. you were doing your, you were doing, your, you were still doing what you had to do, and someone was helping you do what you had to do, so you can move on to the next. Thing. Technically, yeah, yeah. If you think that it helped, that's. I fine. mean, yeah. <laughs> Functionally, it was more efficient. Yes. Which is a form of helping. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was I just thought it was cute that she was in there at all. I love that somebody is as highly strong as Kareen and as fast as she is. Well, I figure I figure she would have because like she she goes down there for her Zen because Nomi showed her how to do that in the first place. Mm. Right? And and so she definitely wanna reciprocate in whatever way she could. It, it did seem like a bit of a kind of, you know, pay it, pay it, pay it yeah. forward, pay it back type thing, where it's like, yeah. you helped me. I don't know how, but I appreciate it. And now I'm yeah. going to not know how to help you, but I'm going to do it here. Here I am. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't know what she's doing at all, but like, she just, like, she, she really appreciated Nomi's initial kind of help. Mm. So she just wanted to do something. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Um, any final thoughts before I do a little outro and we skedaddle, skedaddle, skiddle, skiddle, skaddle off? Just some general slow mo, John Woo action movie noises. I really enjoyed the the Hubert Shield tactic that uh, <laughs> got John Wood. <laughs> <laughs> Still mad about the raccoons in the trench coat. <laughs> oh. So, um, it's the greatest regret of my life that I didn't manage to get through that sentence without laughing at anything in that scene, or the fact that Peachy then followed it up afterwards. Oh, that was... <laughs> that scene needed a punchline. We all yeah. knew that. <laughs> That's all I had. <laughs> so, you what are a human punchline? <laughs> one of one of the things that like was a little bit off. That's that's my bad. Was my instinct was to cut the music when you started the raccoon thing just have it be completely silent and i waited a, i wasn't sure how long it was gonna go i was like is it worth it and i was like maybe maybe not like it would be good to just cut the music and have you tried to have this kind of like miscommunication with no music going and then when i decided to do it that was essentially the end of the conversation i was like ah oh, crap so it's fine. Don't That's worry. That's why I took the baton. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's my time to die. <laughs> it's my time to murder children. Peachy's like, there's a gap. I can, I can be ego man. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Next, uh, next episode. Obviously, we're going to be um, getting to the planet and and going down there. And probably offloading the passengers. Hopefully. Dear. There is a military cordon, but uh, at the very least, you'll be able to do away with the end with the uh, 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 the yeah, IP. Yeah. Uh, so ha have a think if there's anyone you'd like a conversation with or to get to know a little bit more. Um, you know, poss possibilities there. I mean, I've I I did. I, just before we go, I did enjoy the conversation with Colton and uh, and grand great granddad. 
um <laughs> the whiplash though <laughs> from memeing to you ever seen a man just melt in front of you <laughs> <laughs> It happens. Uh, I I personally enjoy the the, the completely different. Yeah. Because mm. it, it feels like it punctuates it better. Yeah. All right. So, thank you for watching, everyone. PG, Tess, Amelia. I wasn't watching. We Safi. were literally in the show. Well, I'm about to finish the sentence that I've started. Okay. Fucking hurry up. Okay. <laughs> PG Tess, Amelia, Safi, thank you for playing and thank you for um, putting on such a wonderful show for everyone. Um, we'll be back next week with more. Um, I think there's there's a probably not in between this episode and next one, but I think there's a couple of snapshots we could do, and there's a plan which I think will probably be in the next episode. We'll we'll probably need to talk as a as a group to um, get that rolling. So, thank you for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Where do I move in this world? Could you please tell me what the hell I'm doing for it? Bring me to my knees. I'm so stupid. Would you tell me honestly if I wasn't meant to be what I see you when I dream? Where do I move in this world? Could you please tell me what the hell I'm doing for? Bring me to my knees. I'm so stupid. Would you tell me honestly if I wasn't meant to be what I see when I dream? It's a big, big world out there. Plenty possibilities. All of them is killing me soft. I want the real me figured out right here, right now. Is this lifestyle the right style for me? Only with time will I see. But by then it'll be too late. Looking in the mirror, a stranger's face If I wasn't right, would you tell me straight? Or would you let me? Where do I move in this world? Could you please tell me what the hell I'm doing for? Bring me to my knees I'm so stupid, would you tell me honestly If I wasn't meant to be what I see when I dream? Where do I move in this world? Could you please tell me what the hell I'm doing for? Bring me to my knees I'm so stupid you tell me honestly if I wasn't meant to be what I see when I, I dream? I want something great instead of all dismay But I can't find my way I fall on my face I flatline my faith I want all escape Let's throw it all away Just like the thoughts I trade For a couple of bucks in this big bucket of love I'm steady throwing my up Hoping for that one in a hundred But fuck stressing the numbers Pop this deck in your summer And see the inner of my head Declog like a plunge Y'all be akin to my feces Your best bet be the Bee Gees The way you think living's I, I staying alive I got my head and my smile But don't know where I'll fly I'm just spreading my wings I'm fine with taking my time I used to rush it all out I'm trying to slow it all down Take my feet and lose ground Give them somewhere to hang I always want it right now I'm Trying to slow it all down Take my mind and lose ground Watch it floating away Yeah Where do I move in this world? Could you please tell me What the hell I'm doing for it? Bring me to my knees I'm so stupid, would you tell me honestly if I wasn't meant to be what I see when I dream? Where do I move in this world? Could you please tell me what the hell I'm doing for it? Bring me to my knees. I'm so stupid, would you tell me honestly if I wasn't meant to be what I see when I dream? <laughs>